Hello world, welcome to your 28th SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you about using the WHERE clause with multiple conditions. Alright, sometimes you may need to specify multiple filters in one statement. For example, perhaps you want to find sales in a certain date range but also only for a specific product. Well, in that case, you could use the AND or the OR operator to combine both filters. And to show example of this, let's go up here to New Query. And we're going to use the AdventureWorks 2012 database right here. We're going to be selecting Sales Order Detail ID. We're going to be selecting Order Quantity. We're going to be selecting Product ID. And we're going to be selecting modified date from the sales sales order detail. Need to be there. And that's from this. Here we go. And then it says where modified date between May first, two thousand seven, and December thirty first, two thousand seven, and the product ID is 809. So we have two conditions there. We have between the date range of May 1st and December 31st and product 809. So let's execute. And there we go. We see the product ID for every one of these is 809. And we also see that the date is between the range of May 1st and December 31st. So there's an example of how to use the WHERE clause with multiple conditions. Um, now, I'll show you how to search for a list of values. So another typical scenario involves retrieving a result set based on a list of values. For example, you might need to return all sales for a particular list of products. So using the IN Operator SQL Server determines whether items in a specified list match the spe specified value. So, okay, we can get rid of this. Don't need him anymore. Going to execute a new query here. Okay, you're going to want to type in the following code. Use AdventureWorks 2012. We're selecting sales order detail ID. We're selecting order quantity, product ID, modified date, just like before. Uh, we're selecting it from sales.sales .sales order detail. Don't need that. That actually doesn't make a difference. It won't throw an error either way, but still, clean code is good code. Um, where product ID. We have 776, 778, 747, and 809. So, okay. Let's go ahead and execute this. There we go. And as we can see, the product ID is either one of these four. And we have the other. Uh, Sales order detail, boom, right there. Order quantity, right here. Product ID, the ID number, everything that we wanted is all represented here. So, okay, and uh, I think that does it for this tutorial. In my next tutorial, I'll be showing you uh, how to use a wildcard search and maybe more. So, I'll see you then. Thanks for stopping. Actually, just to really quickly reiterate and recap, so first of all, we covered multiple conditions. We did two and uh, conditions, and you could additionally do and, or, and then um, this guy right here is called the in. It's using the in operator. And, uh, and since we're still on the where, this is all concerning a where clause, Instead of waiting and doing the wild card in the next tutorial, why don't we, since it's the final variation of the where clause, why don't I just do it here? So, 
Suppose you want to return all the departments at your organization that start with the letters PR. So to do this, you use a like comparison. When you use like, SQL Server can determine if a specified character or string of characters matches a value in your database. So let's go grab this wildcard script right from here. Copy that down. We can just uh, get rid of this. We don't need you. Paste this guy in. All right, let's execute, and there we go. And so, as you can see, it returns all departments to start with PR, and so it's the PR percent used right up here is going to. Uh, Tell SQL Server to return all departments whose names start with the PR and any following characters. So, and that's what we get. So now you know we covered comparison operators and or we uh, did the in and we've done a lot a wild card we like. All right. Now for our next tutorial, I think I will be covering creating aliases and then from there. I'll probably start moving on to joins, inner joins, outer joins, all those different kinds of cool joins. <laughs> anyway, thanks for stopping by. Oh, wait a second. False alarm. I still have one thing that's pretty important that you need to be aware of. The like syntax does not use a typical regular expression wildcard set. As demonstrated up here above, the percent sign represents any string of zero or more characters. In addition, other wildcard characters are as follows. You're going to want to take note of this. That would be a representation of a single character. This would be a representation of a single character in a set. And this would be a representation of a single character not in a set. So just something you need to be aware of. Uh, thanks for stopping by. See you in the next tutorial. This time for real. Set. Something that you need to take note of. See you in the next tutorial. Tutorial. This time for real.